What's up, guys? Scotty Two Hockey here, aka the Average Hockey Fan, and Habs lose a brutal loss. The season is over, in my opinion. I do not think Columbus is going to lose these next two games. They're playing weak old Ottawa, the worst team in the league, and they're playing the Rangers, who have been atrocious, except for when they play the Maple Leafs. It's going to take so much luck for the Habs to get in this playoffs. As you can tell, I look like I barely slept. I haven't combed my hair. I've been in a deep depression after a huge anxiety attack last night. Carey Price played one of his best games of the year in a loss. That was probably his best performance in a loss. I've heard a bunch of Habs fans say that, and i got to say I pretty much agree with it. He's had some other big games, too, in the playoffs. But in the regular season, as far as a brutal loss goes, Price was so good in that game. He kept us in it. Washington had scoring chance after scoring chance in the third and second period. Yes, it was a back-and-forth game. Montreal had a lot of fights, showed a lot of fight, had a lot of scoring opportunities. But unfortunately, Braden Holtby stood on his head. He decides to show up sometimes against the Habs, and he's just great against the Habs sometimes. It's 50-50 with that guy. I was hoping tonight they'd be able to get on him early. Get two or three goals on him early. Hopefully finish the game. My prediction for the game was 4-1. to one. I couldn't have been more wrong. Montreal lost 2-1 in the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching loss of the entire season. It's it's killing me. It's literally killing me to even talk about it anymore. I, I'm going to work today, listening, hearing anything about this Montreal Canadiens team. I'm probably going to have to take the day off sick because I honestly cannot take it, especially from Leafs fans. It absolutely kills me. Montreal shots were 34. Hits were 22. Face-off was 51%. Price .930 save percentage, 29 of 31 shots. He sta he saved, he stopped 29 of 31 shots, he had .930 save percentage. Uh, as for Washington, their, their shots were 31, their hits were 37, their face-off percentage was 49.7, 49%, excuse me. Hopey was .970 save percentage, he stopped 33 of 34, and uh, at least 15 of those 33 were quality scoring attempts. The one that he stopped that really killed me was when Domi got it in front of him. I believe it was Lekkinen kept it in his own, whipped it over to Domi. Domi point blank with the patented Domi shot, but instead he put it on the body. Domi always shoots right under the bar, over the shoulder. Uh, but for some reason, he decided, I guess he was going to try and go five-hole. He was trying to go to the middle of the net. He put it right into Hopi's body. I thought for sure Domi was scoring there. A couple other really nice opportunities for the Habs. But as far as what Price did down the stretch, the, the couple of saves he made, the save he made on Haglin was amazing at the end. He made some great saves. He did everything he could to keep this team into the game. And they just... they. This was, they just lost to a superior team with a goalie who was better than I. I can't even say he was better than I. Yes, his numbers were better, but if Price had to face the same amount of shots, I'm sure he would have stopped them all because after the second goal, he was in shutdown mode. He was in Carey Price all-star elite goalie mode, and the Habs just couldn't give him a goal to work with. They had to give him a goal to work with, even if they got into the overtime. They would have got the point out of it at least, but I feel even if they got into the overtime, Price would have won that game. Price was doing everything he could to win this game for the Habs. Both goals, you can't really blame him getting beat on, especially the other, other one straight across the ice like that, right in front of the net. He did everything he could to get down. It was just a bad defensive play by the Habs. They couldn't get. They should have had somebody in front of that net to retrieve that puck before Eller got to it to be wide open in front of Price like that off a kind of a broken play. It, it's just a, a gut-wrenching a knife to the heart. Habs players, retired old Habs players, Plabs players who have been traded, not retired, excuse me, Habs players have been traded, Habs players who have gone to other teams, who have left the club, always come back to haunt us one way or another. And Lars Eller, I know he got, didn't get the game-winning goal, but he's he still got a goal against the Habs, a big goal. After that, that was 18-36 in, Eller scores from Connolly and Haglin. Nice pass cross from that, like I said. Uh, power play goal after that. About 36 seconds, I believe, 1932 after that. Weber with a power play goal from Armia and Deneau comes off a shot from Armia, bounces off a rebound. Weber's right there with the rebound right after the commentator said, this is the guy with the cannon of a shot. Weber puts it in the back of the net with not even a slap shot, with a beautifully placed wrist shot. The captain steps up, keeps us in it for now. It was a good game, then 258 into the second period. Dowd scores from Burakovsky. The Habs are trying to get it on his own. They go to dump it on his own. One of the Washington players forces a turnover. Wide open in front of the net is Dowd with two Habs players off to the side of him. He, the guy, I think Burakovsky, passes it over to Dowd. Dowd point blank. He made no mistake. He beat Price clean. Uh, 258 into the second, and that's all the goals. That's all it took, guys. Lots of fight from the Habs on the end. Lots of back and forth hockey. There was a point when there was like eight minutes when there wasn't even a whistle. They were going back and forth, scoring attempt, scoring attempt. Washington had the better quality scoring attempts. And Price did everything he could. He stood on his head, but the Habs just couldn't get this one. Like I said, guys, 
to Habs Nation, this is a dagger in the heart. What it comes down to now is Columbus has to lose to New York. They have to lose to Ottawa. Both games in regulation. Uh, they could possibly win. No, they can't win at all. They had to lose New York. They had to lose in Ottawa. They can lose one game in regulation, and the Habs have to win against Toronto. But if Columbus were to lose two of these next games, which... It's very highly unlikely, guys. Look at the teams they're playing. I wish it was like Winnipeg and Tampa they were playing, but they're not playing Winnipeg and Tampa. They're playing Ottawa and New York. But if they lose these two next games and have even, have even scrape a point out of the Leafs game, they're in. So pretty much what it comes down to is Habs Nation focusing on the New York Rangers tonight, hoping they beat the Columbus Blue Jackets. Then we go in against the Ottawa. We go in against Toronto Saturday night. I believe Columbus plays Saturday. It might be Sunday night. And it's going to come down to... Winner takes all. Pretty much Columbus, if they lose against New York, they're going to have to win to get in. If they win, they're definitely in. And the Habs are going to have to win, and they're going to have to hope Columbus loses. And it'll be winner takes all then. Winner gets in. Uh, hopefully that's what it comes down to. Uh, anyways, guys, hopefully you like this review. Or totally don't blame you if you don't. I wouldn't even probably waste my time hearing any more time about this game. It's going to be my second last review of the, uh, the year by the looks of it. But hopefully not. I'm still holding up that thread of hope that the Habs can stay in there. Why do you guys think? Do you think Columbus is going to lose the next two? Montreal is going to scrape the points at the Toronto game or possibly win the Toronto game? Do you have faith in this Habs team making it? Because I have all the faith in the world in this, if, in this team getting themselves in. But when you're depending on other teams to lose and they have games in hand, it just it hurts. Because the team has showed a lot of fight. You can't act like they haven't, they haven't been good down the stretch. They won two huge games. They beat Winnipeg and Tampa. Prior to that, they won five out of their last six. They're showing every bit of battle you can it's just in, you're in a division of killers, and there's just no no space to lose points. You lose any bit of ground. You give them an inch, they take a mile, and that's exactly what Columbus has done. You gave them a little tiny bit of an inch a couple of games ago. They got into that game where they tied it up against you, and since then, they've taken a mile, and uh, that's pretty much how it's been, and the Habs have let them do it with this big loss. Brutal to say. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to ring that bell for my upcoming notification for my next recap. It's probably going to be my last recap of the year, but I will have plenty of Habs and hockey talk for you guys throughout the playoffs. After the playoffs, all the trade rumors leading up to July. Who's going to leave? Who we're going to resign? What kind of prospects are going to be joining the team? There's still going to be plenty of Habs talk during the summer. And for you UFC fans out there, I'll have lots of UFC content this summer because I'm going to be switching it up to a UFC slash hockey channel because there's not going to be that much hockey to talk about this summer with the Habs. Out of the playoffs, and uh, they're probably not going to make a giant move, but they are going to bring up some rookies. They are going to bring up some prospects. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a good team next year. I have 100% faith this is going to be a sick young team next year, a playoff team next year for sure, especially with Mark Bergevin. That guy has made it clear he wants playoffs. That success to Bergevin is playoffs. And playoffs, we want them. Success to me is the Stanley Cup. Get the Stanley Cup. Get into the playoffs first. Habs can do it. Thanks for viewing the video, guys. Brutal night. Might as well go comb this rug that's on my head now. Mr. Average Hockey Fan, a.k.a. Scotty2Hockey, over and out.